Okay, why don't you introduce yourself? Dave Mulholland from PDI. So tell us where we are, Dave. We're inside of the Icon 40 foot container in the Paleo building, Space Park Boulevard. Um, so give us a sort of an overview and, uh, and maybe uh, show us some of the features of the, uh, of the, uh, of sure. the container here. Well, the PDI is a, a data center focused company. Uh, we've been in the business for over 30 years. And if you think about what we do, it's typically on a raised floor space. What we've done differently in this space is we've made everything modular and to be able to fit inside of a container. So we've essentially taken the sheet metal off the outside. The form is a little bit different, but the function is the same. For instance, if you take our product, the PDU and the RPP, take the sheet metal off and maybe take the transformer away and stick it overhead, you could have our overhead bus product called the Power Wave. Essentially, that becomes a distributed means of providing distribution to the racks like an RPP would with cabling and under floor. So essentially you're bringing the power strips overhead and then dropping into the cabinet and feeding a power strip there with either a 250 or 400 amp version of an overhead bus that we call the power wave. And then from there we try to modularize pretty much everything that goes inside the container starting with a rack and the rack unit is built up of the rack of what we call a sled that slides it back and forth, a cooling module, the power module we just described which is overhead and then we also have a monitoring module which we'll see down at the other end which is looking at all the things that we would use to be able to manage that individual rack or look at the whole container as an overall picture. Okay. Um. All right, why don't you uh, uh, tell us a little bit about the, the cooling. You've got some piping here. Maybe give me an overview on, on that. I'll let my, our CTO, Tim, handle that. Okay. Why don't, you, why don't you introduce yourself real quick? Yeah. Tim Cortez, I'm the CTO of PDI. <clears throat> As Dave said, the, the system is very modular. And what you're looking at here is the system is uh, refrigerant-based inside the container. We have chilled water coming external to the container, but there's no actual chilled water inside the container. So what we have is... Uh, a, a manifold system. On the bottom here, we've got a supply manifold that's filled with liquid refrigerant, R134A. On the top, we have another manifold that's slightly larger that returns um, any spare liquid refrigerant and vapor from the cooling unit from each rack back to the main condenser at the end of the other end of the container that we'll talk about. But the beauty of the system is it is modular. At each rack position, We've got a valve connection for the supply line and the return line that you can tie in the refrigerant pump, the evaporator, and the other aspects of the cooling system directly associated with each rack. Okay. Maybe you guys can give us a look at the racks and how you, uh, and how you work them here? Sure. Actually, one of the things that we've tried to do, Rich, to, to make ours different is we've tried to make it so that if a customer wants to fit this out in a 40-footer with either 1 or 14 racks, they can do any iteration in between. So they can truly uh, capitalize their assets over the period of time when their servers show up versus buying them all at once. So if we walk through here, the other thing we try to do is make it so that even when these racks are full, you can actually slide the rack out, get behind there in case you need to wire up some new racks or whatever. So we'll actually walk through the space that we've designed to make it so that you can get to the back of the rack and show you that. So this essentially becomes the hot the hot air plenum here, and then basically the air is pulled out the back of the cabinets. The servers will be right here, pulled into the condenser, pushed out with the fans, and then recirculates back through the front of the, of the unit and is basically pulled back in through the front with the servers. And these racks are mounted on sleds so that it's easy to slide it in and out as a single operator even if they're fully loaded. So this will go back and forth in the space so that normally uh, it would normally be installed up against the, the cooling system in the back. Yeah, and we'll do that in just a minute when, when these other guys get through here. There we go. That was right on cue with the demo. <laughs>
And uh, as we discussed earlier, these are 48 U racks, a little bit taller than your, your yeah, standard each, each 7 foot. Yeah, each one of the uh, equipment racks is uh, 48 U, so we've tried to optimize the amount of U space that you can get in a rack, uh, while still managing all the other overhead infrastructure in the system. So they talked about the busway system, but we also have an uh, overhead cabling system. Also, each rack has this cable management system, which I don't know if you noticed before when you were taking your original video, but as the cabinets are moved in and out, from their normal rack position, the overhead cable management chains allow the, the rack and the equipment to be moved and serviced without having to ever disconnect any of the cables or any of the connections to the cabinet. So that allows you to actually get back behind the cabinet, do work, do work on any of the servers, leave any of the other equipment that's up and running still operational uh, while you do the service work that you need to do. Interesting. Uh, some other aspects of the cooling system and the, and the uh, modularity. Each one of the, the uh, cooling racks is associated with a particular equipment rack. And each one has four independent fans. Those four fans can be replaced independently. They're, they're modular. There's a refrigerant pump associated with each rack position and each evaporator. It can also be replaced, uh, isolated from the rest of the system and replaced if need be. The evaporator can be individually replaced, as well as the rack management system associated with each uh, cooling unit. And the rack management system takes information from the power strips, information from the evaporator with respect to temperature and pressure prior to after fans, we're monitoring the fans, and we can adjust the system to optimize from an efficiency standpoint the individual rack. So we know if a rack is, is running at 10 kilowatts or 15 kilowatts, we know how to operate the pump, we know how to, what uh, fan speed to operate the fans to effectively cool without using too much energy um, to do that process. Now you've got an interesting, uh, the rest of the cooling system down here, maybe we could take yeah. a quick look at that. So we talked a little bit about the uh, supply line and the return line for the cooling system, but this is where it gets all tied in together. Um, there's chilled water on the outside of the container, as I mentioned before. It comes to a, a large uh, condenser that's on the outside of the container behind this white space here. So as the system works, the, um, the vapor and some liquid refrigerant comes back to the condenser gets cooled down by the chilled water. All that refrigerant gets um, converted back to liquid refrigerant, gets stored in this, uh, in this uh, reservoir tank, gets dropped down to another subcondenser uh, sub at the bottom where we drop the temperature another couple of degrees, and then that then feeds the supply line where we have chilled liquid refrigerant going to every rack position. And then just goes back down the container. So what else do we have down at this end of the unit? Um, this is where the main power comes in. So we have options for two feeds, uh, two dual feeds, a redundant feed, a A and a B feed if you wish, depending on your power level and what level of redundancy you want. And that main power coming in then feeds, again, the overway, over, overhead busway system that we've got in the container that then is distributed the entire length of, of the container. <clears throat> we've got a fire detection and suppression system. So those are options. You can have fire detection and you can have fire suppression as well. We also have the option of doing um, smoke and fire detection at a rack level and the ability to shut down based on uh, tripping the uh, breakers feeding the, the server cabinets, individual racks if there's a problem within an individual rack. Um, the management system that we have, it's a three level system. Um, We've got a PLC that takes the inputs from all the sensors and all the monitors within the container, makes decisions about how to operate the container, when to turn on the humidifier, when to turn on the lights, when to turn on the external air makeup to make sure we've got fresh air in the system. We also have another level, which is an industrial computer. The industrial computer allows you to take that data, store it, do trend analysis. It also allows you to do database uh, management. So if you want to have a, a good database and information about all the equipment, and all the infrastructure that's in your system and be able to take that and trend it over time, you can store that data in that, in that computer. We also have the, uh, the HMI, the touch screen um, as part of the system, so you can actually get information um, at first glance at the entire container, looking at the overview, gives you information about what's going on at a container level with respect to temperatures, um, uh, pressures, and it also tells you power levels at each of the individual racks. 
gives you the ability to touch on any individual rack, take it to that rack, let you know any information you want about power levels within each of the strips. It also allows you to look at every piece of equipment all the way from 1 to 48U within your rack. It allows you to assign a name, a serial number, a customer, however you want to describe that piece of equipment, as well as look at individual uh, information about that equipment relative to the power level, its consumption, um, and how it's operating. You can also look at the, uh, the process overview of the cooling system. So from here out is the water side cooling system, and here in is the, uh, the rack inside the container refrigerant cooling system. So this gives you a high level of what's going on at the water level. And pressing on any, any of the individual racks now takes you to look at all the information associated with cooling at an individual rack level. We know information about the pump, the refrigerant pump. We can get information about each of the fans, the fan speed. We get information about temperature and pressures before and after the evaporator. So you basically have the ability to look at this information in real time and see what's going on in the operations of the system. We also have the ability to take any of the sensors and any of the data in the container and add it to the uh, historical trending map here. So any of those, of those sensors can be added to this and trended over time so you can see the performance of your system, see how it operates at different times of the year, different times of day. It gives you relatively good information about where you're at and what's going on in the container. We have an alarm screen. Alarm screen just gives you an overview of active alarms in your system. Um, there's also admin tools where it allows you to override certain functions. This is also where you would put in your information about any of your individual pieces of equipment in, in, the, um, in your rack um, for the inventory uh, access that we talked about earlier. <clears throat> so that's really an overall overview of the, of the uh, facilities management system at a container level. Um, it also has the ability to have up to five remote users that can look at any of this information independently of each other. They don't have to be looking at the same screen. They can be looking at different pieces of information um, at the same time, um, and they can log in remotely with an IP address. Cool. So uh, if we look back down this way. So, so Dave, maybe tell me a little bit. Of, you guys were working on this for a while. How did you? Yeah, we, it took us about uh, a year. And uh, what we did was uh, we, we tried to make our design different than everybody else's and make it uh, focused on design flexibility, serviceability, and, and auto-calculating things like PUE with, with, the, with the building management system so that we can make people's jobs easier. And we're, we're out there talking to a lot of different people and the, container, the containerized data center is, is really something different to everybody we talk to. So we're still learning a lot every day about this market and, and uh, we, we think we have a pretty good product and, and we think it's a good opportunity for this year and, and we look forward to some success with it. And uh, we, we thank you for coming here today. Well, listen, thanks for, for taking the time to, to walk me through it. A, a very interesting product. Thank you.